do you just hop around on one leg with a ball rolling around a frame? Leave them in the ashes. For an audio description version, courtesy of Scribly, click the link in the description. Hey everyone, and welcome to The Offbeat. It is me, Lachi. I'm a black girl going blind, just trying to stay fabulous. I'm here to motivate and educate. And if you're really loving this trip, just hit that subscribe button and help, hit the bell. So today we are gonna be talking about disability sports, focusing on the Paralympics. What are the Paralympics? Well, Paralympics literally means parallel Olympics, and it highlights sports by disabled players. So you know I'm all about this. Not enough people know about the Paralympics, and while you're sitting here being motivated by the general olympics baby please tune into the paralympics if you want some real motivation every paralympian has the perfect story and today we're going to be talking to one of the head honchos at the international paralympic games board tim reddish but before we get into that i wanted to go down memory lane and talk about my experience as a budding blind track and field star when i was in fifth grade i believe it was we had a sports tournament and they put me on racing because they knew i was fast and we had this really complicated maze we had to run with all different zigzags and spins and turns and I remember that adrenaline rush when they were like in your mark get set go bam I was off and I soared to the front but here's the problem because of my vision loss I actually always at every turn not knowing which way the racetrack was turning I actually had to slow down and let the person behind me get in front of me so that I could follow them to figure out which way to go and then as soon as they knew what was going on I would soar past them the trouble was that right at the end there was a weird skivvy turn and I couldn't figure out what to do and the person behind me get in front of me and I got second place and I've been kind of sore ever since. And so I am so ecstatic about the Paralympics, bringing on this new era of athletes that we get to look up to and wish we were. So in the spirit of the upcoming Olympic games, I hooked up with Mark Bullock, one of the coaches for blind tennis. And he gave me the opportunity to sit in on one of his virtual trainings put on by Metro Blind Sports. And I came to realize I'm about to be a blind William sister out here. So before we talk to IPC board member, Tim Reddish about the inner workings of the Paralympics, Let's get sweaty training for blind tennis with Mark Bullock and Blind Metro Sports. A huge thank you to Samantha Bullock and SB Shop for this amazing t-shirt. If you don't know about Samantha Bullock and the amazing adaptive fashion SB Shop, check it out in the description. You will not regret it. All right, y'all, let's do some blind tennis. First, let's get warmed up. So we're just going to start off just by doing a little bit of marching. So no racket and ball required to start with. Oh, this is making me miss Zumba class. <laughs> <laughs> Now this is aerobics. I'm just hoping I don't sweat my eyelashes off because these lashes. Yeah. <laughs> Put both arms up in the air and you circle one arm forwards and one arm backwards. Wait, what? <laughs> forward. <laughs> one arm will go forward, one arm will go backwards. Ah, like that? Yeah. You got it, you got it, you got it. Oh, Good. like that. Oh my. <laughs> Okay. What are we doing? So now if you get your get the ball and we're going to try and keep the ball as still as possible so it doesn't make a noise and start to move your racket from left to right. Oh no, oh no, please don't fall. So I'm doing it right, but my ball is just not listening. Yeah, you better do what I said. <laughs> yes. I feel like I have so much power. But we're going to go up onto one leg. What? <laughs> what at what, what point in tennis do you just hop around on one leg with a ball rolling around a frame? What about balance, Lachi? How familiar with tennis are you, Lachi? You, have you hit? So the amount of um, experience I have with tennis is checking out the Williams sisters' awesome dresses. So is it okay if I take this while I'm walking and then just use it as self-defense? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when, when we serve, normally actually the, the ball, we throw the ball up above our head and hit it above our head. You're not gonna hit the ball, you're just gonna do a shadow shot. Oh, I don't I don't hit the ball at my computer? No, not <laughs> Okay, make it Oh, well, running to the net. Low okay. forehand. Brilliant. And here you go. I'm going to try and hit a winning forehand. Oh no! Low backhand. I hit a high forehand, hard downward. Okay, and, and you hit a winning shot. Actually, you've beaten me. I roll and tumble, and I do an awesome pose at the end. <laughs> and there's a close-up on my smile. <laughs> Great session. Nice to meet you, Letty. 
Yes, nice to meet you all. And thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your class. It's interesting because I didn't know what to expect. Uh, there's so many different things you can do with this that I was not aware of. And I think it's a sport that should grow. I think that more people should be aware of it. And I think it's really awesome. I think it's got a great future. Well, I want to give a huge thank you to you, Mark, and just the whole team and to Metro Blind Sports and having me. This has been a ton of fun. <laughs> All right. Well, hi, Tim. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really excited to speak with you. Someone with such amazing stature in the sports community. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. And it's a real pleasure and a privilege to be part of uh, your great journey. Oh, wow. No, the pleasure is all mine. The pleasure is all mine. So yeah. you are a Paralympic medalist swimmer, and that means you know how to swim. Just tell me a little bit about your, your, your swimming journey. I didn't become sight impaired until late in life. Well, didn't know I was sight impaired. So my journey as a swimmer started as a very, very young age. Um, when my dad was in the army and he taught me to swim the good old fashioned way. He took me to the local outdoor swimming pool and said, uh, here you go, let's have some fun. And then he took the rubber ring away from me. So I either went down to the bottom or I swam back to the side in the good old fashioned sink or swim. And from the eight of age onwards, uh, I swam with a, a local swimming club. Wow. You know, if I was dunked in water, first of all, I'd get my hair messed up. So I don't think I'd enjoy that. <laughs> okay, wait, you mentioned that you went blind later in life. I believe you went blind in your early 30s. I didn't really know until that age. It meant that I grew up with uh, no excuses. It was just a matter of uh, uh, being on the street with the rest of my mates and uh, again, sink or swim. Looks like this is <laughs> going to be our theme for the day. <laughs> Would you have, if you knew early on, still pursued swimming to the extent that you have? I think I would because one of the things that we should all do we should always gravitate to something we believe in. So you decided, I'm going to go for it. You ended up winning medal after medal after medal. And you did so well that you just decided to run the joint. So now... You <laughs> it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I, I, I did the hard yards. I sat on these little committees that made silly decisions that had no impact on disability. So I wanted to make a difference. And I ended up getting employed by the organization in the end. You started from the bottom, now you're here. Yeah. And disability, for the most part, tends to be run by non-for-profit situations. And it keeps it from getting to that mainstream point, from getting out to the public the way that we want to. We still shouldn't forget the disability community because they are the people that can sometimes unlock where like you, you're being quite proactive, where you're being very proactive, you're you're being yourself, which is great. And that's what all disabled people should be. Just be yourself first. But unless we have the disability community that are working behind the scenes, we need their expertise and experience to help transition from the disability community into what I call the inclusive community. We are one. That sort of pivotal role of translating between the greater disability community and then between the well-meaning general community who wants to be inclusive but doesn't know how. Please engage with me and, and hear what I say. At least give me the opportunity to fail or succeed. Yes, I love that. You don't give me the opportunity to fail or succeed. That's going to be the quote. That's going to be the tagline. <laughs> for I, I, I think it's been an interesting journey for me because I've gone from, I was an athlete and then I was in charge of the program and now I'm on the International Federation. And, and we know not every person can be a Paralympian. Like you said, you said you couldn't swim, but, but I can't sing. So the, well, we're all good at some... Let's hear what you got. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. The important role for me is to make sure that the environment is right for our athletes. And obviously this is a challenge this year with Tokyo. Right. But beyond that, it's about providing the platform to let the world know out there, first and foremost, we're a person and we have the ability to achieve. The ability to problem solve. It's just something that we have and it's a muscle that we continue to hone as people with disability living in a world that doesn't quite have the tools quite right for us. Minimum at the moment documented 
15% of the population have a disability globally. 15% is a high percentage. People don't recognize that. I know that here in the US, we have 61 million adults. It's 25%. It's one in four. Yeah. And so every fourth person walking down the street has some form of disability. And yeah. there are so many more people in this 15% than we even recognize. You may be in it. And by you, I mean you, the viewer. And yeah. I don't think you should be ashamed of it. In some countries, one, you're afraid to, afraid to declare that you have a disability. Yeah. Rio 2016 Paralympic Games was a major success. I think it was at least threefold. They have three times more people registered disabled because of the impact of the Paralympic Games in Brazil. That's a, an outcome goal that you dream about, but when they come through, it's a great feeling. That's so beautiful. Seeing somebody that has what you have be proud of themselves, yeah. you get to see what it's like to be proud of yourself. Yeah. I think the motto to this is you've got to believe in yourself. And, and when choices come, just make the choice. Don't worry about it, because if you work hard and you believe in yourself, eventually the outcome goals will come. Make the choice. Oh, yeah. gosh, that's the whole thing. It comes back <laughs> yeah. to sink or swim. Yeah, you just you've got to do it you've got to you've just got to make things happen and believe in yourself i am so like on the same wavelength that you are as soon as i began to really embrace my vision loss my sight loss my journey to blindness my life has been so enriched it's like yeah. people go why is your life so much better now that you're blind and i think you hit the nail on the head it is a choice it's the choices you make your mindset changes it's a paradigm shift and i can only be grateful for it i remember the scariest thing i ever did and I look back now and I laugh, was when I was given a white cane to use, that was the biggest stigma in the world. In the end, I thought, sod it. If it gives me more space so I don't walk into lampposts anymore, then so be it. And if anybody gets in my way, that's their worry, not mine. I think one of the funnest things I love to do, because I use a cane at night, I yeah. love to get in my high heels and yeah, yeah. a cute little outfit and just power walk through the street. Yes. People just have to dive out of the way. It's not a negative thing. It's actually a positive thing. It, it yeah. brings you that freedom. I'm healthier. My life has been enriched because I've managed to keep myself active and engaged in the things I want to do. Awesome. Well, we're going to have to round up here. So I want to ask you if there's <laughs> any last final words that you want to say. I think the key here is that don't worry about anybody else. Think about yourself, believe in yourself. And yes, you will upset and annoy people sometimes, but if you're doing it because it's right for you, because you're the only person that you need to be answerable to when you put your head on the pillow at night, just do it. Folks, just do it. You heard it from Tim Reddish himself. Thank you so much for joining me today, Tim. This was probably one of the most insightful conversations I've had all year. My pleasure. It's been great. All right, all right, all right. This was one of the most labor-intensive episodes I have done yet. Blind Tennis was definitely a blast. Thank you so much, Mark Bullock and Metro Blind Sports. And of course, the hugest of thank yous to Tim Reddish. I also want to give a huge preemptive congratulations to all the athletes that are going to be playing in Tokyo this year. You are all true beacons. Show the world what we can do. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end of this episode. Please hit that subscribe button if you want to continue down this journey with me. A blind Serena Williams, just trying to stay fab. Lots more to come, so stick around.